So a brief introduction about uh, our uh, motivation. Uh, so basically, uh, the Zaul fertilization uh, target uh, of uh, energy efficiency is uh, traditionally uh, the target of uh, ASIC or uh, microcontroller uh, uh, devices. So uh, our objective is to improve the stability in both performance uh, of uh, this kind of uh, system, which are heavily uh, power and energy constrained, uh, make it uh, flexible, so programmable uh, through OpenMP, OpenCL, uh, OpenMix, and uh, open software and code uh, hardware. And uh, our target is to make uh, a parallel uh, low power computing uh, platform. Uh, so move uh, the paradigm, paradigm of uh, ultra low power platform from a single uh, core plus accelerator to multi-core multi -core parallel computing platform uh, being constrained by a power budget uh, ranging from 1 milliwatt to 10 milliwatts. So basically uh, the starting point uh, of our PAL platform uh, is a, a highly optimized uh, implementation of the open uh, risk uh, processor. Uh, we started uh, to work uh, at the evolution of the open risk uh, uh, last year. We improved uh, the IPC, uh, making some small uh, changes uh, on the or uh, one uh, 200 uh, uh, processor. And uh, now we have uh, uh, an implementation of the processor, and Michele uh, Beretta uh, will talk about that in one of the next presentation. So, but basically, the basic block of our architecture is a simple and uh, very efficient uh, processor uh, that allows to achieve uh, high energy efficiency at a uh, high IPC area. Uh, then, uh, due to the degradation of uh, performance. Uh, that are related to the low voltage uh, operation that we use to achieve a uh, high level of energy efficiency. Uh, we did the number of uh, cores. Then to add uh, flexibility to the whole platform, we need uh, to add a uh, 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 logarithmic uh, interconnect that uh, allow all the processors to work uh, uh, to exploit the parallelism also at that uh, data level and uh, not only at thread uh, or task uh, level. And uh, this architecture allows uh, each processor to access uh, it, uh, its memory bank in a single cycle. And uh, uh, there is uh, one processor installed only when uh, there is a contention on the same memory bank on the same uh, clock cycle. Then to making uh, a full system uh, Chip, we need to add bus adapters to connect to a software infrastructure, add the DMA to enable fast and efficient communication between the memory subsystem, so between the TCDM memory and the L2 memory, and the cluster interface to be able to communicate in an efficient way with the external board, also to a standard set of peripherals. Finally, uh, the objective of this architecture is to be uh, scalable and uh, energy efficient. So, uh, for this reason, our infrastructure uh, involves uh, several uh, clusters, and each cluster can be uh, separately uh, body, uh, so work with uh, independent voltage, independent frequency, and independent back bias uh, voltage that uh, allow to modulate the energy performance uh, trade off depending on the workload required by its application. So, but uh, what do we need uh, to make uh, a PALP ecosystem? So, a uh, computing uh, infrastructure ecosystem. So, of course, we need uh, hardware uh, IPs. So not only the processor, but also an uh, interconnect, both the local, local I mean a cluster interconnect and the global, such as a uh, global shock bus interconnect, uh, memory hierarchy, caches, memory controllers, hardware accelerators, and so on. But we also need the software infrastructure that can be controlled by a compiler, can say, but also uh, programming models. So because people like uh, love to program parallel architecture with uh, well-known programming models, 
that uh, are uh, not uh, used in the, this uh, very embedded field at the moment. And uh, we need also a very efficient uh, runtime to uh, allow to uh, uh, reduce the overhead of uh, these programming models in uh, this kind of uh, very power constrained uh, architecture. In addition, we need uh, validation. Validation for uh, the software infrastructure, for uh, the hardware, and uh, some kind of exploration platform to uh, validate the uh, architectural uh, changes and the architectural optimization made on the platform. So we need uh, some uh, virtual platform, emulation platforms, benchmark regression tests, and so on. And finally, we need uh, silicon. So, an optimization flow to deal uh, with uh, silicon implementation flow, verification flow, and uh, full custom uh, IPs. So, to be able uh, to uh, deal uh, with uh, voltage and frequency scaling and uh, body bias uh, uh, management, uh, we need uh, a set of uh, analog uh, full custom uh, IPs. But also we need uh, support for uh, debugger, profiling, uh, design for testability, which are a set of requirements that are not, that are not strictly related to research, but uh, they are needed to, to the platform to be usable uh, from a wide, wide range of uh, users. So our objective is to build an open source ecosystem for exploring uh, with silicon the next generation of uh, parallel uh, computing uh, platforms. So last year, uh, uh, when I presented the PAL platform, uh, our uh, say consortium uh, was composed of, of uh, University of Bologna and uh, ETH. And uh, in uh, this year, uh, we added uh, other uh, university uh, research centers and uh, industries to this project uh, to deal uh, with uh, uh, all the competencies that I described before that are required to, to build a complete system. For example, the Polytechnic or the Milano is helping us with the compiler. The TFL uh, is working on uh, memory uh, subsystem, CA on analog IPs, and the T on the technology. Uh, and uh, currently, our group uh, is composed of uh, three processors, more or less 10 postdoc research, uh, 20 <coughs> students, and uh, several uh, master students working on the universities. But uh, we are uh, still looking uh, for motivated and uh, skilled partners to make this happen. And uh, for this reason, uh, we are uh, available to share uh, everything uh, we've done up to now, up to, now to other partners uh, to allow further collaboration and further increasing of uh, this uh, group. But uh, even through uh, the main uh, uh, the goal of uh, this project uh, is to uh, make uh, silicon. Uh, there is not uh, only silicon in this project. So uh, the silicon platforms uh, available uh, now are PALP uh, uh, one This is a silk fabricated uh, and tested uh, uh, this year. We have a PALP 2 designed and the uh, PALP is scheduled uh, next month. And uh, PALP 3 is on the drawing board and the expected default is uh, half of, of uh, next year. But uh, we also plan uh, to have uh, a small-scale uh, FPGA emulator. So if uh, we want to handle uh, with uh, real applications, uh, we cannot uh, wait uh, every time the silicon uh, making a board uh, and uh, prepare the application. For uh, in the board, we need a lot of uh, sensor cameras uh, and so on. So uh, we are planning to make uh, a small-scale uh, emulator uh, platform with uh, a FPGA which has the same footprint of the uh, PALP uh, chip with uh, the main target of uh, developing application uh, on the pre-silicon uh, phase. But also we plan to have uh, an uh, heterogeneous uh, FPGA platform so the target of this platform is uh, quite different uh, for the, from the overall objective of our project. With this platform, which is composed by a linker processor and uh, a larger Kintex board, we would like to explore uh, heterogeneous computing, meaning a computing platform composed by an host, 
like a cortex A9 uh, available on the uh, the ink board and uh, a many core accelerator. And this board, in this case, the accelerator uh, will be a very large scale accelerator made of uh, more than uh, eight clusters or uh, more than 64 core. Uh, uh, 64 core. In addition, uh, we have uh, only also a virtual uh, platform uh, that uh, allow to evaluate uh, the execution of publication uh, on the cluster with our annotation. And uh, this allows to overcome uh, the main problems that uh, force with uh, very low level power simulation. So you can uh, simulate uh, only a very small portion of application and uh, you cannot get uh, a feeling of uh, the overall power consumption uh, that happens when uh, you have a uh, shutdown, of course, uh, when you have a very large application, very complex application. In addition, uh, we have a high-level uh, C simulation platform, uh, which uh, is a multi-cluster uh, with the main target of application and uh, programming model uh, development. And finally, we have a, a soft, uh, software uh, infrastructure, which is at the moment composed of uh, three programming models. So we are supporting uh, OpenMP uh, 3.0. Uh, recently uh, ported on also on the RTL uh, platform and uh, OpenCL and uh, OpenBX available on the high level uh, simulation platform. So let's give you some detail about uh, the uh, silicon platform. So our uh, main challenge is to uh, achieve uh, uh, high energy efficiency using a, a tightly coupled cluster of simple uh, uh, processors operating uh, in a uh, near flanger. So basically, in, uh, there are uh, problems. When uh, you work uh, at uh, very high voltage, dynamic power is uh, dominating uh, the power consumption. And uh, since uh, uh, the power stays quadratically with the supply voltage, by reducing the supply voltage of a system, you can uh, increase the energy efficiency of the platform. But uh, when uh, you reach a certain point, uh, leakage becomes uh, dominating because uh, the transistors start to uh, behave uh, very slowly and uh, uh, the frequency that uh, you run uh, does not allow you to amortize the leakage power which is constant. So, uh, usually uh, it is uh, shown that uh, for very low uh, workloads, a uh, single core uh, uh, processing is more uh, energy efficient because you don't have the overhead of the system, while uh, for multi core, uh, for uh, high workloads, multi core processing is more efficient because you can uh, reduce uh, the work supply voltage of the system to achieve the same uh, workload exploiting parallelism. So, our uh, objective is to uh, reduce uh, uh, the gap uh, between multi-core and single-core in this region, so in uh, the very uh, low uh, workload region, and uh, uh, reduce also the increase the energy efficiency when uh, operating uh, at uh, the high workload uh, region. So, uh, increasing uh, the operating the energy efficiency, operating range of uh, multi-core processors. And uh, finally, uh, we want to uh, do it uh, applying the reverse body bias and uh, forward body bias uh, aggressively to achieve uh, energy efficiency proportionally. So this is the uh, architecture of the first chip uh, uh, that was fit out uh, last year in December. It's uh, a very simple uh, cluster composed of uh, four processors, eight uh, memory banks, a DMA and a bus infrastructure and a healthy memory. And uh, the main purpose of uh, this uh, platform uh, was to explore the technology flavor and uh, see how it uh, behaves. And uh, so on. So it was a, a test only chip. In this chip, uh, we explored uh, the fine grain uh, body bias uh, partitioning uh, of uh, the platform. So, as I mentioned before, by uh, exploiting uh, 
modifiers, you can uh, dynamically modulate the voltage threshold of uh, transistors. So, uh, when uh, you need uh, to gain the performance and the energy efficiency, you apply forward or body bias and uh, you increase uh, uh, frequency and energy efficiency. When the, you, you don't need uh, to use uh, a block of the system, you apply reverse body biasing and uh, you reduce uh, the leakage of the system. So, in the architecture, we partition the, the system in uh, six uh, body bias uh, regions. And uh, each body bias uh, reason uh, was con controlled by a uh, body bias uh, multiplexer. In this way, uh, we could uh, apply reverse uh, body bias or forward body bias independently on uh, each reason in order to modulate the performance and uh, leak the trade off separately in uh, each region. So uh, we take out uh, this simply in uh, December in 28 nanometer uh, PSY technology, uh, the uh, regular VT flavor that uh, allows to apply both forward body bias and uh, reverse body bias. With uh, the best uh, for the chipper was able to uh, run uh, on a water's range range between uh, uh, 0.4 and 1.2 watts with a peak uh, energy efficiency of uh, 60 gops uh, uh, watt at the series 7.4 MHz, 5 volt, uh, 5, uh, uh, 0.5 volt and 0.5 volt of forward body bias. But uh, the big problem of this chip was the consumption of uh, memory blocks. Uh, and uh, uh, so by removing the power of memory blocks, we could achieve an uh, energy efficiency of 185 gops uh, per watt. So as I highlighted before, a good thing of this uh, chip is the uh, possibility to modulate uh, body, body bias uh, uh, separately in this block. So basically this graph should show what happens when we uh, apply uh, body bias on uh, performance, on frequency and uh, on leakage. So uh, by applying uh, body bias, you can uh, uh, increase uh, the frequency of uh, sub-block of the system by up to uh, 2.5 uh, 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 times and uh, it is uh, mainly effective at uh, low volts. By uh, apply reverse body bias you can reduce uh, leakage power by 10 times, up to 10 times. Uh, basically this graph shows uh, the energy efficiency of the pulp uh, V1 uh, chip. So obviously the, the reason of uh, interest for uh, our application is the reason that ranges between uh, 0.5 and uh, more or less 0.7 uh, uh, volts. We see the reason uh, uh, bounded by 10 milliwatt uh, power consumption and uh, that uh, uh, allow for the highest energy efficiency that uh, goes from uh, 40 to uh, 60 drops uh, uh, watt. And uh, it's interesting uh, to see that uh, applying, uh, increasing uh, the uh, forward uh, body bias, so it, uh, reducing the threshold voltage of uh, transistor, the, energy, the peak energy efficiency increases, and uh, also uh, the uh, frequency of uh, the peak energy efficiency uh, grows. And then uh, we draw the PALP uh, V2 uh, architecture. Uh, so PALP V2 uh, uh, is an improvement of uh, PALP V1 with uh, some architectural improvement. First, uh, we add uh, the set uh, of uh, peripherals uh, that uh, allow the chip uh, to communicate with uh, external world, external peripheral, for example, good from uh, flash and uh, so on. We added a good from that uh, enables a uh, standalone uh, mode. So uh, this uh, PALP2 chip can be seen uh, as uh, an accelerator of uh, a master microcontroller that uh, programs it and uh, uses it as an accelerator or as a standalone platform that can boot independently and uh, manage sensors and so on. And uh, also we removed uh, for the dependencies with STAPs. Uh, we implemented a custom uh, uh, AXI uh, for uh, interconnect, which is uh, fully developed by us in a system uh, variable. Okay, and uh, the good thing of this chip uh, is that it's uh, a board uh, ready chip. 
in the sense that uh, it, this is uh, on the contrary with the pipeline, uh, this can be implemented and integrated on an application board. And uh, they take out uh, of the CPU's plan for next month. Uh, okay, we added also some features to deal uh, with the problem that we had with uh, Park Vian. For example, uh, we removed the part of the memory subsystem. We replaced part of the memory subsystem with uh, standard cell memories. The benefit of standard cell memories, memories is that uh, they can provide uh, a very uh, small uh, power energy per access with respect to SRAMs and that uh, they, uh, they work in the same operating range of uh, the rest of the logic, which is uh, 0.3 to 1.3, uh, while uh, standard SRAM uh, are usually mounted to 0.5 uh, volt. And uh, also we have <coughs> uh, NMU and uh, some block that to uh, deal with uh, a partial shutdown of uh, memory banks uh, and uh, so on. Uh, we added the uh, voltage and frequency uh, domains. So in this chip uh, we have uh, one uh, uh, voltage uh, domain for the SOC and uh, one voltage domain for the, the cluster. Uh, we added uh, an FLL, which is uh, a kind of PLL, PLL but uh, which is uh, much smaller and allow to uh, dynamically change the frequency of the two domains uh, in a very fast uh, uh, way. So we have to add uh, synchronizers and level shift around the boundary of the cluster. And uh, yes. So the estimated uh, best energy efficiency point of uh, this chip uh, is uh, 110 drops uh, squat. Uh, utilizing the other flavor of uh, technology available uh, uh, from uh, Steve, which is uh, LVT. This technology has a uh, lower water threshold and uh, allow to uh, apply aggressive uh, for guard body bias more than uh, two volts. So, with this uh, chip, uh, the current uh, estimations uh, we expect uh, to have more than 200 uh, GOPS uh, support. And this is without uh, body bias. So we believe that uh, with uh, body bias we can uh, even increase uh, this best energy efficiency point. And uh, we should note that the, the uh, frequency at which we achieve uh, this uh, best energy efficiency point is uh, much higher than uh, the previous one. So in pulp uh, V3, which is on the drawing board and the uh, expected default is uh, mid of uh, next year, uh, we plan to put uh, the new process implementation and uh, this is going to talk about the Michele Beretta from the Tecnico di Milano. We have added the support for interrupts, uh, events, uh, to deal with uh, core shutdown during DMA transfer for uh, sequential regions of OpenP programs, for example. Support for debug on chip power management, so body bias generation and uh, cluster supply voltage generation. Uh, shared uh, instructional caches and uh, ultra low voltage uh, high speed uh, IOs uh, to be able to uh, communicate from uh, chip uh, to chip in a uh, very fast and uh, energy efficient way. <coughs> Antonio will talk about uh, the FPGA implemented platforms uh, available on the public system. Okay, so David introduced the, our silicon roadmap. We have also a roadmap of what concerns the emulation platforms uh, in FPGA. We have uh, uh, three main developments going on in the FPGA side. So the first one is uh, the emulator platform. Uh, the starting point is the same RTL that uh, is going to silicon for the Pulp V2, to which we uh, obviously removed all the technology dependency and map be able to map it to silence of PGA. We added some glue logic just to wrap around the, uh, the our RTL. We added since in FPGA uh, dual port memories are for free let's say we added uh, a dual a second port to the L2 memory 
be able to load the code directly. And we use the uh, zinc, um, the uh, static part of the zinc, so the ARM core, as basically an, uh, an intelligent traffic generator. So this allows us to have, uh, obviously, uh, much faster simulation speeds. We use this uh, mainly for RTL validation. And uh, this allows us also to test the I.O. interfaces uh, without having to you know, design board and uh, having to deal with the real uh, uh, hardware. The second uh, architecture is the uh, host, what we call host. So uh, we want to make uh, a more, uh, let's say, useful use of the Zinc platform and use the ARM core to do actually something uh, that already David introduced before. So what we do, we added a, a remapping address block. We added two high-speed ports to the uh, main uh, SOC bus. And this uh, allows us to have a very fast uh, communication between the, uh, between the ARM side and our, uh, uh, and our architecture. This route block is uh, very flexible, so it can be configured dynamically by the uh, ARM core. This uh, allows us to explore uh, the use of the PALP architecture in, uh, in an heterogeneous system. So the ARM core in this, in this case will run the operating system and will run the, the application <coughs> and then it will offload some tasks to our accelerator. Uh, in this case we have uh, obviously very high bandwidth between the two systems and this allows us to uh, to explore what we need in the hardware to support a very efficient communication between the two worlds. So we are also investigating the use of mailbox, so how to send messages from, uh, from the ARM side to uh, the accelerator and obviously it, uh, it's a very good platform to try out uh, all uh, the programming model that we are uh, The third and last uh, uh, project which is going on is uh, we are uh, basically designing our own board because uh, here we want to really see what's going on uh, when we deal with real application, so which is the power consumption at system level of the sensors, which is the power budget we will have for certain application. So we are targeting a board with uh, a lot of uh, low power sensors. We are planning to put accelerometers, uh, gyroscopes, uh, low resolution camera, well, environmental sensors. And uh, we couldn't find any board suitable for our uh, purpose, so we are uh, forced to design our own. And, you know, it's uh, quite a lot of work, but uh, we are investing in it. So, here is something that we also want them to use as a vehicle to give to other research group to try out the, the PALP platform. Obviously, it will not be uh, meaningful in terms of power because the LPGA consumes like a uh, thousand times what we, what we are planning to consume with the real chip. But at least functionally, it can allow to test the PALP uh, platform in uh, very different application scenarios. So, yeah, this is it.
vaccine, we are also uh, looking at the um, chip vision algorithm for low resolution cameras. Because obviously we don't have the resources for uh, to do a you know, object detection on a, on a full HD camera, but uh, we believe we can uh, we can do it on a low resolution camera. Yes, it's the entire 32 bit, but we are uh, uh, now we are extending it to floating point, so we will add a uh, shared view. Uh, so it will be one or more few unit shared with the post, depending on the applications. Do you have any feature on the fire? Yes, it has an entire Mac uh, unit. You, you, talk, you talked about um, being able to measure energy on chip. Uh, you said it was very fine grained. How fine grained is it? Fine grained partition. Uh, you, you talked about how, how you, you talk about me how you measure the energy. Did I, or did I miss what you were saying? Yeah. We measured uh, on a tester. We have a tester. Yeah. Uh, we run an application on, on the chip. And uh, we had, uh, actually, we had uh, uh, our chip. Uh, uh, divided in several uh, uh, voltage domain only for uh, power measurement. So we had uh, uh, one voltage domain connected to pads for the digital part of the cluster, one for the uh, periphery of the memory, one for the array of the memory. So we were able to separate off all the voltage the, 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 the actual energy measurements off chip. I, mis I misunderstood what you yes. said. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I, I thought you got it on chip. No, 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 it was all cheap. We had a uh, lot of IOs uh, dedicated to power measurement. Mm -hmm. So, how much of it is going to be open source? Uh, so, <laughs> so, for the moment, uh, we are available uh, to share uh, everything to specific groups uh, who ask us to collaborate to join the project. Then, uh, maybe one day we will uh, release it as an open source. But uh, so if you send us an email and want uh, to collaborate with you on a specific topic, there is no problem. We can share everything. Because uh, at the moment we have also a very strong technology dependence in the API, so we have a lot of blocks, uh, all the blocking cells and so on, and they are in the code, so it will be very quiet. Uh, so we have a lot of effort to be in the European. For example, the core, I think, is. Uh, Yeah, I was thinking of the axi. Yes. Cool. All right, thanks, guys.